and a devotional booklet. Uh, drive through Ashes will be available uh, outside the main entrance from 7 to 8 in the morning, from noon to 1 in the middle of the day, and then in the evening at 7 o'clock, we'll have a full service of communion with Ashes that will also be live streamed. So options online, options uh, in person, and uh, different times of the day. So that all on March the 2nd. A 13-week Bible study on the Gospel of Matthew begins on March the 14th, and the group will meet in All Saints Hall on Mondays, uh, begin at 10.30 each Monday morning with Pastor Herb War facilitating that, uh, to reserve your study guide and also a spot in the group. Call the church office here, 717-393. 3958, no later than March the 1st. And participants should be masked and vaccinated as part of that uh, protocol as well. But now we, uh, we uh, worship together.
A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do, do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the 
You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. A reading from 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. Love your enemies, and you will be children of the Most High. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will also be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our Old Testament reading for today is the culmination of the Joseph story, one of the most dramatic stories in the Bible. And who doesn't like a good story, right? The Bible is full of them. The kids and families who regularly engage the monthly stories featured in Good Shepherd's own Bible Stories project can tell you the Joseph story themselves in good fashion. It was spread out over three months July, August, and September of 2021 in the Bible Stories Project. And it had to be spread out over three months because there's so much to it. Joseph's story takes up a pretty good chunk of the book of Genesis, chapters 37 to 50. Today's reading is from chapter 45, so near the end, but I'll give you some of the backstory this morning as well. Joseph was son number 11 of Jacob's 12 sons with Rachel, his mother. And clearly Joseph was Jacob's favorite son, his pride and joy in his old age, which you can imagine 
didn't sit so well with Joseph's other sons, or Jacob's other sons, Joseph's brothers. They also didn't like it when Jacob gave Joseph a long robe with sleeves that tradition holds was multicolored, which means it was very valuable. Or when Joseph told them of his dreams in which various objects, including the sun and the moon, were bowing down to him. Well, one day when Joseph was 17, his father sent him out to check on his other brothers who were out in the country tending their father's sheep. And when his brothers saw him approaching, they hatched a plan to kill him and be rid of him once and for all. But Reuben, who was the oldest, convinced them to spare his life, and so instead of killing him, they stripped him of his fancy robe and threw him into a pit that he couldn't climb out of. When a caravan of traders passed by on its way to Egypt, the brothers sold Joseph to them as a slave. But they kept Joseph's coat, smeared it with the blood of a goat, and took it home to their father, telling him that Joseph had been killed and eaten by wild animals. Once a caravan of traders reached Egypt, they sold Joseph to Potiphar, who was an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. And to make a long story shorter, against all odds, Joseph became a successful man, first in Potiphar's house, and later, and even more unlikely, after a significant setback, in the house of Pharaoh himself. Incredibly, because of his great management skills as well as his ability to interpret dreams, he became Pharaoh's chief advisor. And all of Egypt was indebted to him because, following his counsel, Pharaoh had stored up enough food for the people to survive a terrible famine that lasted for seven years. And it took the lives of many in the surrounding areas, including in the land where Joseph's father Jacob and brothers still lived. Hearing that there was food available in Egypt, Jacob sent his remaining sons there to buy some. And by this time, Joseph had been made governor of Egypt, and his brothers then came to him requesting food, although they didn't recognize that it was their brother. After initially putting them through some machinations intended to deliver a bit of comeuppance, finally Joseph sent everyone else away so that he was alone with his brothers. And that's where we pick up the story today, when Joseph reveals his true identity to them. At first, when he does so, they're upset because they're afraid of what Joseph might do to them. But instead of retaliation, Joseph seeks reconciliation, saying that though they had intended him harm, God had been working through all that had happened to him to preserve life, starting with Joseph's own life, but including the Egyptian people and now also even Joseph's own family. Because Joseph could see God's hand in all of it, he was willing to forgive and more be reconciled with his brothers. And what followed was a tear-filled reunion and a reuniting of them as family. It's interesting that unlike other ancestral stories in the Old Testament, through most of the Joseph story, God remains really in the background. The focus is on Joseph and his father and his brothers and later Pharaoh. What we see in this story is a sibling rivalry played out to the extreme and the lowest depths of difficulty and despair, as well as almost unimaginable heights of success and joy. It is a very human story. But not until our text today, the final installment in the Joseph saga, is God's role in all of it revealed with Joseph's testimony. When, through the eyes of faith, he was able to see God at work in his life, even at work in the most challenging and difficult parts of his life, bringing him through all of them and putting him in a position to help his family in a time of dire need. Joseph's words remind me of St. Paul's words in his letter to the Romans when he wrote, we know all the things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Now that's not to say that bad things don't happen to those who love God. They happen, of course, all the time. People of faith are not immune to hardship or tragedy by any means. But what Paul is saying is that in the midst of those bad things that happen, good things 
happen too. And those good things that are happening are God at work, even if in the background. God is always working good, no matter the situation, sustaining and empowering, healing and restoring people, communities, situations. And over and over, those who love God come to expect that God is at work in that way, so that even in the midst of difficult times, they look for the ways that God may be doing good things. I don't know about you, but in the last few years, there have been many times when it has been hard to maintain that expectation, that faith, that hope. A worldwide pandemic that has taken away so much, the persistence of systemic racism and a resistance to addressing it, the divisions and distrust that exist between us fueled by disinformation, the political dysfunction that erodes confidence in our leaders, and the present realities and looming threat of climate change. All of it and other things too have brought on anxiety and depression in many of us such that it's difficult to maintain that faith and hope. The challenges have been overwhelming. It's hard to maintain the hope that God is still working good things. But isn't that often the way it is when we're going through something? All we can see is what we are experiencing. God's presence and activity remain hidden to us such that it is only when we have gotten through the challenging time that we can look back and see anything that is good. It's certainly been true in my life. Often I've only been able to see the sign of God at work in the rearview mirror. But I have seen it. And knowing that helps me hold on to that faith and hope even in those challenging times when I can see no tangible evidence of God at work. Imagine it wasn't any different for Joseph. When he was lying in the pit his brothers had thrown him into or later in a jail cell in Egypt, he probably wasn't talking about God working for the good. That conviction only came later when he was able to look back at those events, knowing that he had gotten through them and also arrived at a position of influence to be able to help his family. Only then was he able to talk about God working in all that had taken place. You know, this is one of the reasons we need each other. Because when we're in the midst of the struggles, we need someone else to remind us of what we may not be able to see or appreciate for ourselves. When we're having a hard time hoping and believing, we need to be able to borrow faith and hope from others. A few years ago, a woman came to me to say she would no longer be coming to church because to do so would be hypocritical. She'd been going through a number of health as well as relationship challenges that I was aware of and said that in all of it, she had lost her faith. We talked together about how difficult it can be to believe. Then knowing how important her faith had been to her, I asked her to keep connected and to let others here at Good Shepherd believe for her for now. She did stay connected, and eventually her faith returned. There is a reason that we are baptized into a Christian community. It's because we're never, we were never intended to carry this faith alone. It's too hard. We need others to lean on, and, and at other times we're able to support them and return the favor. We need others to see the good, sometimes to be the good in the midst of of the bad. As she prepares to leave us, we give thanks for the ways Pastor Wilson has been a good thing to us through the challenges of the last two years. As we bless her on her way to new ministries next week, we give thanks for the ways she has been assigned and witness to us of God at work. We expect God will continue to work through her to do more good things in new places and in new ways even as we trust that God will continue to do good things in and among us. As far as the state of the world is concerned, after two years, we're finally seeing some hopeful signs as far as COVID is concerned. And yet, we cannot know what the months or years ahead will hold for it and many other things. Of course, we never can. We can't see into the future. 
but we move forward, trusting that we do not do so alone. We have one another for support and encouragement along the way. And though hidden from our view, we have God, always working, albeit in the background, to bring about good things for us and for this world. It's Joseph's testimony to us today. God is good and God is faithful. Believe it, trust in it. Amen. Let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Heavenly Lord, we pray for the people of God and for all who worship both near and far. We pray for our bishops Elizabeth and Jim, our pastors Mark and Carla, our cantor Chris, and all our staff and volunteers called to serve. God of grace and peace, hear our prayer. Forgiving God, we pray for all your creation and we ask for forgiveness for our failures in conservation. Help us to protect the plants, animals, and life of every form. Help us to reduce pollution of the air, land, and waters. Guide us to repair the damage done and ensure a healthy, bountiful world for generations to come. God of grace and peace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you call us not to just love our families, family and friends, but also our enemies, the ungrateful, and the wicked. Give us strength in our dealings and help us to, forgo, to forgive those who harm us. Give us the will to speak and work against injustice and inequality. Help us to work together to make a fairer world for all of your children. God of grace and peace. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask for your guidance in times of trouble. Give wisdom to those in public office Give strength to those working for peace in all the world. Give comfort to those impacted by violence and tragedy, and give hope to those who grieve. God of grace and peace, hear our prayer. Living God, we pray for all those impacted by the ongoing pandemic, for those who are ill or recovering, for the healthcare workers, teachers, emergency responders, and service providers, and for all the workers who continue to put their safety at risk for the benefit of others. God of grace and peace, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, hear our prayers as we offer to your protection all for whom we pray, for our families, our companions, and all those we love, for all those who call on you in time of trouble and grief, for those who are isolated physically or emotionally, and for all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for those in our church family and those we name silently in our hearts. God of grace and peace. Hear our Eternal God, we lift our voices with all the saints as we entrust to your everlasting care those who have gone before us. Especially we pray for Dorothy and Jim and their loved ones. For in Christ Jesus, from whom comes salvation of the righteous, 
we are raised imperishable. God of grace and peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, Jesus was shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, Jesus revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now 
and forever. Amen. Amen. As Jesus himself taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of glory, in this sacrament you unite us in the body of your Son. May we who have been guests at this table grow in love for one another, that through us your light may shine in all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. God is our light and our salvation. Thanks be to God. God.